1968 was a year filled with twists and turns, including a dramatic turn of fortune 50 years ago this month with the election of a politician who'd all but written himself off years before. Richard Schlesinger looks back. You don't have Nixon to kick around anymore. It was hard to imagine in 1962 that Richard Nixon would be worth kicking around anymore. He'd lost one presidential election, and he just lost a second election to be governor of California. Thank you, gentlemen, and good day. Even Pat Buchanan, who had become one of Nixon's speechwriters, knew rehabilitating him would be tough. He was a loser. He had lost and lost and lost. The only way you get rid of this loser image is to win. But by 1968, the stage was being set for a law and order candidate like Richard Nixon. The country was pre-revolutionary in 1968. Historian Evan Thomas is the author of Being Nixon. There were race riots, riots on campuses. The country was divided in a way that it had not been since the Civil War, worse than it is today. Nixon's main Republican rivals, George Romney and Nelson Rockefeller, dropped out. Nixon was lucky in that the Republican Party was falling apart around him. And Nixon, the old pro, was there to fill the vacuum. So was Nixon lucky or good? All great politicians are lucky and good, and Nixon was both. Lucky for Nixon, the Democrats were being divided on the left by the Vietnam War and on the right by George Wallace, who was siphoning off voters attracted by his race-based populism. These are the kind of folks that people are sick and tired of in this country all over the United States. Nixon was ready to get kicked around again, but he still had a lot of kick left in him. Those who have lost elections in the past have come back to win. I hope to come back to win. The plan was to run against Lyndon Johnson, the incumbent president. But just two months after Nixon got into the race... I shall not seek. Luckily for him... And I will not accept... Everything changed. The nomination of my party for another term as your president. Patrick Buchanan told Nixon that Johnson had dropped out. Did he seem surprised? Oh, he was stunned. We were stunned. Nixon accepted the Republican nomination in August of 68, just a few weeks before his biggest break yet. Burning is Burning credential. The Democratic Party can't be Democratic. I mean, what hope is there for democracy? Democrats had their calamitous convention in Chicago while the cops were outside clubbing demonstrators on the head, delegates were inside shooting themselves in the foot. Enforce order in the convention. Nixon loved every minute of the Democratic convention. Don't elect those crazy Democrats. You're gonna have riots in the streets. Elect me and I'll bring some order and quiet. Vice President Hubert Humphrey won the Democratic nomination, but his old friend, then Senator Walter Mondale remembers it didn't mean much. He finally had his chance, and the nomination was worthless. Worthless? Well, it proved to be worth something, but at that time it looked like it was poisoned. By contrast, Nixon's campaign ran with military-grade discipline. He traveled with an entourage of managers and message men, overseen by John Mitchell. We do operate, I believe, in an orderly fashion, and that comes from preparation. We have planned it and programmed it and have had the time to carry it out. It was all working. Nixon was up, way up in the polls, until September 30th, when Hubert Humphrey turned the tide with this speech. I want to talk with you about Vietnam. Humphrey repudiated Lyndon Johnson's war policy. As president, I would stop the bombing of the North as an acceptable risk for peace. The announcement would narrow the polls dramatically. Nixon immediately had an unexpected order for his personal aide, Dwight Chapin. Get President Johnson on the phone. Who did he say that to? He said it to me. I had no idea what to do, so I asked Rose Woods, who was Nixon's secretary. She said, call 456-1414 and watch the White House number. That's the White House number, and uh, asked to speak to the president. Mr. President? Yes. I'm awfully sorry to bother this Dick Nixon. Yes, Dick. President Johnson was recording the call as Nixon discussed Humphrey's speech. This will be interpreted, as I'm sure you know, as a dramatic move away from the administration. It's my intention not to move to that. Did you have a sense of how strange that call 
was? I felt that it was one of the most intriguing political maneuvers that I had ever heard for Richard Nixon to be calling Lyndon Johnson and he's telling the president, I'm with you, not exactly those words, but implying it. Mondale thinks it's evidence that Johnson might have been rooting against his own party's nominee, his own vice president. Do you think Johnson wanted Humphrey to win? Maybe. I'm, I'm not sure. I think at the end, the last two weeks, he wanted him to win. But I think the early part of the campaign, he was mad at Humphrey. He thought Humphrey wasn't being loyal enough. Do you think Johnson wanted Nixon to win? I thought so for a while because he was doing things to help Nixon. But Johnson ended up helping Humphrey come within a hair of winning with this speech five days before the election. I have now ordered that all air, naval, and artillery bombardment of North Vietnam cease. I thought we had lost. Humphrey had momentum. I thought we could make it. Those must have been very heady days. Yes. Finally going to get a Minnesota president. <laughs> they almost did, but Nixon held on to win by just about 500,000 votes. Richard Nixon goes over the top. Richard Nixon had known bitter defeat in elections even closer than this, and he was magnanimous in victory. Nixon had Dwight Chapin set up a meeting with Humphrey just days after the election. And as the meeting ended, Chapin saw a side of Nixon. Have a visit with Vice President Humphrey. Few others ever saw. The men had their arms around one another. Humphrey was sobbing. Nixon was patting him on the back saying, Hubert, you know, everything is going to be okay. You and Muriel going to have a great life. Humphrey chokes out, if there's anything that I can ever do, I want to be doing it for you. It was such a poignant moment. There's the president waving goodbye. Dwight Chapin, 27, graduate of the J. Walter Thompson Advertising Agency. Where is the administration plan to make America first again in manufacturing?